San Antonio, Texas. Welcome back to episode one of Soy Saf 2022. I'm absolutely happy that we are back broadcasting and talking about soccer in San Antonio. I'm your host, Benji Mendoza from Soy San Antonio Football. Stay tuned. We got lots to talk about Texas high school soccer in San Antonio. We love it. San Antonio FC, as well as women's semi professional professional soccer in San Antonio, Texas. Since 2017, we have been committed to bring you the best football coverage in and around San Antonio. Stories with more heart, more soul for our city, our region, our hill country. More than a brand, we are a culture. Soy San Antonio Football. And with that, we would like to thank Alpha Studios and our wellness dispensary here in San Antonio, Texas. Check out their links below. Thank you so much for supporting San Antonio local soccer and Soy San Antonio Football. It is greatly appreciated. If you would like any more information as to how to be part of the Soy San Antonio Football family, it is up at the email that is shown below. We would love to sit down and talk to you to bring more community soccer to the community. And with that, let's start with everybody's favorite topic. Texas high school soccer has begun in San Antonio, Texas. And I'm going to tell you right now, six games have already been played on men's and women's side. It is as of the 27th of January, and it is an amazing showing so far. Guys and ladies, do not miss on this year's, do not sleep on this year's San Antonio high school soccer because it is promising you to be a showcase at every game. The level that these kids are playing is incredible. I'll be honest with you, I am a little jealous because they have almost everything available for success. The coaches are next level, and the fans, the parents, the school spirit is vibrant and alive in San Antonio, Texas, and it is amazing. We ourselves did our feature, our first game, game one of district play was between Reagan and San Antonio Lee, the current state champions in Texas, right out of San Antonio, and we were absolutely surprised at that match an incredible game it was a tie and wow what can i say wow reagan surprised me lee is still looking like a juggernaut but let's begin with this all right everybody wants to know about the rankings but i'm gonna tell you right now the top team on the men's side is incredible smith and valley out of spring uh, out of spring branch nine and one y'all that's incredible Start of the season, 9-1, and one. and I'm going to go right down my ranks right here, then followed by Alamo Heights, 7-1. and one. Cornerstone Christian, I'm giving you the overall perspective of San Antonio game of all the teams, 5A, 4A, 6A, but Cornerstone Christian is off to an 11-2-2 two two start as well. They started earlier in the spring, uh, earlier in the winter, so they're good to go. Reagan has done in an outstanding job. They're currently standing at 5-2-1 and one. Southwest. The juggernauts down there, those dragons with Coach Jaramillo coming in there with a 6-1-1 and one and one record. Johnson falling right after them in Churchill, 6-1-1 one one as well. And then the state champions falling in at 8-4-3-2. But again, do not sleep on these guys. It's only the beginning of the season. Definitely a post-playoff run is going to be happening, and you don't want to miss out on that. After that, you got O'Connor, Breckenridge, and Antonian Prep, and Bernie. 4A champions are sitting there at 8-2-1-1. Guys, ladies, 
It's incredible. There's so much talent out on display on the men's side. Each of these teams are doing some amazing work, some technical work on the middle. They are really showing some high-quality soccer, and we could not be prouder of each and every one of these teams. You know, for me, Smithson Valley coming right off the shoot gate to – a, a quick and start you know a lot of people are surprised that at lee but you know what it's it's not really rebuilding they're really trying the best to um to, to defend the title it's so hard to defend the title in san antonio it was just because again the level uh is just incredible of play with these kids here in high school it's just next level i've it's been a minute since i've seen it but um Southwest, I think, makes a big run in the 5A spectrum. And again, Bernie, I believe, is going to just dominate in the 4A. So um, with that said, men's high school soccer is off to an amazing start. It is full gear kicking in. And, you know, I know we're just, you know, I know we're just all, you know, excited about it. There's only been six games played um, as of uh, the 27th of, uh, of, of this month. And there's more to come. It's going to be a long season. But rest assured that on the men's side they're going to be duking it out and if you go to these games it's it's definitely not it's definitely going to be putting on a show a team i would like to talk about is as well um sam houston here out of san antonio they basically lost so many matches last year i think they only won two games and this year turning it around so sam houston is doing an incredible job here in san antonio do not sleep on sam houston at all and harlan do not sleep on harlan as well harlan is out there crushing it and i know we're going to get a lot of information hey you forgot about this team and this team trust me we have not it's just there's so much to talk about and we just want to do this quick rundown about what how it's shaping out johnson again is looking very lethal on the men's side so very good work from them churchill as well uh, looking to do some impressive work on their end tough group that they're in but you know they're going to be definitely going to be doing a lot of a, a, a battling out on the soccer field. So the men's side of San Antonio high school soccer is looking pretty interesting. Follow if you guys want more information. We would like to thank our friends over at Six A Soccer on Twitter. They are doing an awesome work, um, just trying to bring you all the information and highlights. Also. Um, uh, Lethal Enforcer is doing great job as well, giving some more relevance to uh, the high school uh, spectrum here in San Antonio. That is your quick rundown um, for the men's soccer. I know it's not much, but you know what? That's all we need for right now. These teams are really, really out there. They're really impressing in their divisions and their inequalities. And, and, and you know, it's early on in the season, so we like to wait a little bit more late March so when we start seeing these teams really duke it out for the district and winning by districts and districts and moving on into the playoffs, it's going to be a lot of fun. I cannot wait to, to, to just see uh, San Antonio. I believe this is a year they dominate in the area, and I believe this is a year they're going to be dominating in district. Um, I think this is a year they take over the Valley teams, which have which have been very um, you know, they've been they've been they've been tough. You know, let's be honest, the Rio Grande Valley has produced a lot of state champions over the last t uh, 10 years in 4A, 5A, you know, and Brownsville River right now is looking really good. Valley View's looking really good. These are teams that are just, you know, they're they're on a hunt as well, just as much as San Antonio. And they have San Antonio right in their radar. They they want to beat these these San Antonio teams, you know, and then last year that Valley View Southwest game was intense down in the Rio Grande Valley, and then when um you know the the Rio Grande Valley came up here to the six A, you know they took care of it in the area rounds, but still, you know that's something I I believe personally that the on the men's side that they're definitely going to be getting back to the dominating stages. So we're wishing you the best of luck on the men's side. Women's a very surprising very surprising start for me. Um, was not expecting. Uh, this team to launch off as they did again um, as of the 27th of January. They've played six matches already, um, and they are just incredible, um, including preseason and everything. The the team right now on the women's side is O'Connor. O'Connor is up going up at a 10, 10 and one, and then you know right we got to see them right right we got to see them against San Antonio Lee, and right behind O'Connor you have Reagan. Reagan. San Antonio is really, really, really working hard. Um, they are really, really 
it's it's going to be the dark horse. It's going to be a surprise team when it comes down to playoffs. I think they're just they're really working together to continue and bring more of that quality of soccer behind Reagan. You got Bernie Champion out of Bernie Madison. Man, check out Madison. Madison is doing really good sitting there at five. Johnson on the women's side there sitting. I'm sorry, Madison sitting at four and Johnson sitting at five. Brandon San Antonio's followed there in number six and then number seven. Steel is back in the game. They're looking lethal, and right behind them is another great team with Alamo Heights, Clark, and Canyon New Braunfels. And the big surprise for me, rounding off a little bit right behind them, is is um, is uh, is Taft, San Antonio Taft. Um, I remember back in my day, Taft uh, used to be a big time school. Uh, we could never beat them, in, and I'm not going to show my age, but you know, let's just say early 2000s, <laughs> they were a really good team. So on the women's side, the Taft, Taft girls are really doing good. Again, listen, Madison High School, they have a stout team. They're coming off all cylinders. Very, and what's surprising about Madison is that they're super young. They're very young. Um, they got a lot of ta talent in the sophomore freshman level, so you need to check out Madison. O'Connor. Coming in big time, you know, they got that experience, they're dominating on the middle, and they're really, really moving forward. You know, they're striking the ball every chance they get, and they're just trying to dominate as much as they can of the game, possession of the game, distribution. They're, it's a great, solid women's team that's got they got going out there. Reagan, I will talk to you a little bit about. I got to see them play, and I'm going to tell you what, this is one tenacious team. San Antonio Reagan is really about winning a, a they're, they're, they they got a winning mentality all of them do but I think I think Reagan's got that psyche that you know man I'm gonna come out there and I'm gonna come out there swinging on all cylinders because the I, I got to see them play against Lee and it, boy I tell you what I was impressed I mean they were full press you know the whole time first and second half and just right out the shoot gate boom they're gonna come at you uh, Johnson again uh, that's another team that I was able to just see as a, as a fan that was a really fun game that I got to go see and you know what Johnson girls they're gonna be a surprise team coming up and do not count out steel um, steel high school is one of those dark horses that I think is gonna make a good area run in my opinion steel is going to be doing good as well as canyon out of new Braunfels. they're they're um those teams out there out in the hill country they're they're really working hard to really continue pushing um forward and brennan brennan high school is really really working hard to continue on um to move forward and on the women's side you know we're going to talk specifically in san antonio those but there's so much so much more going on again this is just january uh, district play has just begun and just maybe two weeks into the season and you know some of these teams have already completed some of these games um in this in this month you know they've already played up up to this moment and you know what it's it's very impressive i think like i said just to recap san antonio when it comes down to the men's and women's in high school soccer be very alert when it comes down to area I think they're just going to dominate. It's that heavy in San Antonio. And I know we can talk about the Vandergriffs out of Austin and Westlake out of there and Lake Travis. But you know what? Pfft, forget those guys. You know, they're, they're, I think this is the year that San Antonio soccer is just fearless. I think with San Antonio Lee Mendes and Bernie winning a state championship last year, I think it just woke up something in these kids in every high school say, yo, it's possible. We can do this. We got teams. We can get there. And I think San Antonio is going to be put on the map when it comes down to the wealth of youth talent moving on to the next level. And that's going to wrap it up for San Antonio football. High school start off 2022 San Antonio, Texas. And on to the next topic, our beloved San Antonio FC. And we could not be prouder of this squad. I'm going to tell you what, it's been an interesting offseason. There was a lot of questions lingering. Um, I think I'm going to touch briefly as to last season, um, some of the things that have happened and some of the things that are happening at the moment. Lots of movements, lots of movement, moving parts. Currently, right now at San Antonio FC, they're not done. I think there's going to be more surprising signings coming down the pipeline. But the most important thing is now that USL is moving into, you know, the regular format of a schedule. We have the big time teams coming in from the West. Obviously, the biggest one that we want to always want to watch out for is the guys that knocked us out of the Western Championship Conference. Uh, 
OC, Orange County, and you know we, we have a lot of them finished business, and we can talk a lot about that team and about that game, and we'll touch about that a little bit um, here in a bit. But uh, how do the biggest question is how is Alan Marcina and San Antonio FC going to handle the El Pasos, the New Mexicos, the Phoenix Risings, the Oakland Roots, the again OC, which we play at the end of the year, which is I don't know why. Give us a game where we can start off with um, the 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 schedule has already come out. We'll share that here with you, but that's the biggest question. Yeah, we did great in our mountain west division uh last year but now here come the big here come the big guns you know rgv again we can talk all day about rgv totals but hey they got some surprise signings coming down the pipeline they haven't announced much but trust me they're going to be making some surprising moves that is really going to affect the team and see what we're going to be end up going all right 2021 let's talk a little bit about that let's talk about the western conference championship a little bit about that season it was um it was impressive that's what i'm going to it was a successful impressive season i don't think um any of us saw what was coming in the playoffs uh obviously rgv going out on the road and knocking out el paso was incredible you know I, nobody expected that and in you know, some of the big team Phoenix got knocked out in, in, you know, in, you know, OC and Oakland Roots went to penalty kicks. And it was just it was an incredible run, a very well-deserved um, um, moment. Um, but I think one of the defining moments was losing Matt Cardone, Mark, Matt Cardone literally um, at the end of the season to that freak, you know, just that freak injury, you know, just it was gone. And. What do we do? Uh, we have Carlos Mercado. Yeah, great keeper, young potential. But at the end of the day, moving into playoffs, what what were we going to do? And somehow, out of the magic cat, Alan Marcino was able to pull out um, our <laughs> our absolute favorite keeper at the moment, Jordan Farr out of Indy. And that was incredible. I mean, the guy just came in and he seemed like he was playing for a whole season with San Antonio FC and went on to the playoffs and made some amazing saves. I think, in my opinion, the best save of all USL last year. Incredible against OC. Just, I mean, the guy just came and stepped in and was the leader of that we needed in 2021, pushing more into forward into the into the season. Our defense, I mean, just incredible. Mitch Tainer was just, you know, the Tainernators, a lot of guys call them. Just incredible in the backfield, real solidifying back there. PC coming back, Patino coming back. You know, Joe Gallegos moving in the middle. It was a, it was a great 2021 season. I don't think anybody expected it. Um, if anyone said that we were going to go into the Western Conference Championships, all right, that's that's a lot of belief and hope in our team. I personally did not, um, but you know what? The the soccer gods played it in our favors and. And the soccer lads of San Antonio FC played at the level, and they were dominating towards end the, towards the end. I just they didn't expect an RGV at home, and man, we were hoping that things could be different and we could play OC in San Antonio. But the powers that be at USL decided to play in this really, really not up to par, not up to date stadium out there in Orange County. I mean, I've, I I honestly felt like I was watching like a Sunday league, cars parked all over the place. You know, it was. The pitch, from what I was told, was not the best conditions. And so San Antonio went out there, you know, went overtime, penalties, and just, man, that one that one shot, you know, that just went right off the the, the, the post. Just, you can't, you can't really, you can't really get mad at that. The boys gave everything they could on the pitch. You could see them knocking themselves down. But 2021 was a great season. 2021 was a great season. It was an impressive, very impressive, eye-opening season. I think one of the most beautiful moments ever that occurred at that stadium was RGV versus San Antonio FC. Just the organic crowd that just showed up with the cell phone lights and the fireworks and the beer garden, the beer bunker, I'm sorry, just filled with smoke and people and just the cheers and it's just so or natural organic wasn't even forced if you weren't there please show up 2022 because i'm telling you that was contagious and i think that caught on to the fans and that is going to be i'm ready for game one 
before we get into 2022. Let's talk a little bit about our wonderful SAFC. If you want a really good recap, our, our, our contributor, Miguel Padilla, wrote an amazing recap as to the, the San Antonio, the state of San Antonio FC as of to right now. It's report number seven. Um, it's the off-season report, and um, he did an absolutely incredible job. He crushed it. I think the biggest news that's coming out right now is, you know, Joe Gallego's heading out of here. You know, he's out. He's going out to go play some pro soccer in Europe. And I think that, you know, it's uh, I think it's good for Joe, and I think it's good for San Antonio. I think Joe Gallego's, you know, had to go from San Antonio. I firmly believe that last year was his season. I kept telling people he's got to go. He can't stay here. He can't. You know, be the darling in SA. He's got to go out there and prove, you know, the quality of his, his skills. You know, he's got to go out to the world and show what he can do. And I think he's going to do exactly that. So, I mean, the man had seven goals, four assists, and 32 appearances in 2021. I mean, the kid's only 20, you know. Well, he's not a kid, but in my eyes, you know, he's the youngster is only 20, 21, you know. And, and it's time for him to, you know, really go out there and, uh, really hone in on his skills in European just the way Ethan Bryant did out in Belgium. And he went out and this kid, I mean, he came back. And, I mean, he's still with San Antonio, but we keep loaning him out because people want want this guy to play for him. Ethan is an incredible player. And then Leo last year, that's another kid I want to talk about. Leo's another youngster that I'm glad we're bringing back. Um, I believe he's 17 or 8, probably pushing 18 now, to be honest with you. Check Somebody check me on that. But Leo, I mean... This kid went out on loan. Monarchs are scoring out there in Austin. Just the kid's doing great work. So yes, there is talent and from homegrown talent players here in San Antonio, Texas. So I'm happy. But some of them, like Joe, he just had to go. So we're very, 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 very happy for you, Joe. Congratulations. We wish you the very best of luck out in Europe. Um, but the biggest thing, and I think in my opinion, was solidifying uh, in between the posts. They brought in goalkeeper Christian Bonilla, number 23, Colombian international player. I mean, the guy Bonilla is just an incredible player. If you ever hear, if you ever want to see some of his uh, his work, just all you have to do is uh, Copa uh, Go into Copa America Centenario and watch some of his work with Colombia. And now he's here, you know, he's here in San Antonio, Texas. And, and we could not be, man, how lucky can we be to have uh, to have uh, Christian Bonilla and Jordan Farr. Jordan Farr is back for the 2022 season, and that makes me happy. Clearly one of the big fan, fan favorites going into 2022 this 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 man came in, owned it like he was never left the team. He loved the, the 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 community and he loved the spirit of San Antonio. I remember asking him just you know offline, you know, just hey man, how do you feel about you know San Antonio? And all I heard was, man, I hope I come back. And you know what? Hope turned into reality because Jordan Farr is back here in San Antonio, Texas, and we could. Could not be any more elated to have this guy because that gives us security. No word on Matt Cardone, um, whether he's retired or he's removed himself from the game. You know how our beloved goalkeeper, our homegrown talent, um, likes to keep his uh, privacy. So uh, any as soon as we know here at Soy Saf or we trickle down that Mark, Matt Cardone has hung up the boots. The man's already done the legendary work behind the post for San Antonio. Um, I mean, games played saves goals of the week player of the month you know it's it's incredible i mean the only thing this guy was missing was a goal in the gloves for usl um but besides that i mean when it comes down to san antonio he set the standard as to what is expected for a goalkeeper and i think jordan Farr and christian bonilla and, and carlos mercado come in and and they are going to definitely fill in those uh gaps that are needed some other big signings that have been coming down obviously re-signing players is one of the biggest things that um that uh that we like to see and with, with that being said you know uh some of the some of the biggest re-signings that we saw obviously back in the backfield when it comes down to it is you know uh mitch tainer that's huge for us um and uh as well as um uh it's just mitch mitch tainer is one of those guys that we needed um we could not afford to lose 
uh, 20, uh, we couldn't afford to lose in 2022. And I'm glad that everything fell in place in Sacramento. I'm sorry, we could not afford them to lose them after 2020. And we lost them. And he ended up going to Sacramento 2021, went back home. And man, when he left, I was heartbroken because I was like, we need this guy. What are we doing? We need this guy back in San Antonio. And the soccer gods, as it may be, on a loan, he came back to San Antonio. And you know what? Man, it, him and Connor Maloney coming back um, for the third season is very pivotal for us to to really um really uh be successful and not only that we are we we also added a carter manley from rgb Toros. now everybody i know you hear the word rgb Toros, and you're like oh disgusting but let's be honest carter manley stopped us many many times uh, when it comes down to defense carter manley is legit and when it comes down to him you know it, there is going to be a definite support when it comes down to Farr, Tainer, and, and Connor Maloney in the backfield. I think, um, yes, we had major signings in the back, MLS Loney's, but you know what? These guys are going to come in and step into the shoes. They understand um, what that backfield is going to um, present with self. And, and, you know, we've been about always, um, we've been about, you know, our backfield. San Antonio has always been known as one of the top, you know, defense, you know, uh, players that have come in, Sebastian Ibiaga, Cyprian Hedrick, you know, uh, Ian Cochran, Iron Man himself. And it's now it's this time for this defense to show up in 2022. So I'm very happy to see these, um, these, these, these folks coming back. In the midfield, obviously the big news with Joe Gallegos leaving the midfield, which again, I think is incredible. I think it's awesome that that ended up happening um, for Joe. And again, we wish you the very best of luck. But we did get another great uh, um, player, Loera. Loera. David, they, David Loera. And he is a Spanish midfielder, international player who was actually playing for Orlando City. Ended up having 11 appearances with Phoenix. And now we have signed him over here in San Antonio FC. And I think that's going to complement. Uh, I honestly believe stepping in for, for um, Joe Gallegos, you're going to be seeing a lot more of Leo and um, Leo Torres, and as well as uh, Mohamed Abu, the Ghana international, is returning for his second season with San Antonio FC. And the big news is PC. We need PC back, and we needed him. Um, we needed him desperate. That is the Iron Man. That is El Capitan. PC is back for San Antonio FC. So it's starting to look really good in the middle. It's um, going to see how we're going to do in our first games and see how these guys are going to complement each other. But I think one of the youngest talents, and I'm so, I'm so glad that they picked him up from Austin Bold. I got to see Atiz Dioff play so many games with um with Austin Bold, he, you know, he had 38 appearances, um, netted in five goals with Bold, incredible speedy player. And you know what I like about uh, Atif Diof and what I've seen about him when he was over at uh, Austin Bold is he, he's, he is very much unafraid. He is a quality player. That was one that we needed to take from um, from Austin Bold, and I'm so happy that they reached out and uh, brought him in. And honestly, uh, the biggest question when Marcus uh, Epps took off the Phoenix Rising was who's gonna who's gonna replace who, who's gonna replace uh, Epps? I mean, the guy was absolute crucial for the success of San Antonio FC. Well, there's your answer, you know. And Atis is going to be a very big surprise. I think the fans are going to be very pleasantly surprised with his style of play. And when it comes down to the forwards, you know, the biggest things. And I know. I, I'm going to talk about this player, and a lot of folks are always about, well, he missed the PK against OC. You forgot about what he did for us and how many game winners he clinched for us. But the big signing for me was, um, and obviously, he, you know, coming back was uh, Justin Dillon. Um, for the second time, for his second season, Justin Dillon is coming back for San Antonio FC. We need this guy. We really do. I think him and Patino, a healthy Patino, are very dangerous up front. Now, remember, Patino had eight goals in just 14 matches, and he missed half of the season to a lower leg injury. Four, I mean, just eight goals in 14 matches says a lot. And Dylan scored seven goals with seven and 17 shots on target. So that is just between those two guys is just 
incredible. And then, not only that, when it comes down to it, we got Elliot Collier from Chicago Fire. And Elliot Collier is, you know, coming in from the MLS side. He scored six goals uh, with Indy when he was out there on loan. And the guy is just, I, you know what? The guy is just, man, I'm, he's going to complement the team up front so well. I think those three... Um, uh, and reinforce in the middle with PC and Leo Torres and Mohamed Abu and Atiyah. Uh, you know, it's it's going to be a really really good chemistry. I believe. I think these players can play. We, we will see that chemistry out there, and the curse of being scored on in the 73rd minute is going to go away. I think in 2022. I think this team is going to be. Um, the way it's looking at, it's going to be. Let's push forward. Let's keep, let's keep the gas on the pedal. Let's bring it to them. Let's show what we can because we have the potential. Now, some of the things that we are do that we are missing. Um, Mitch Tanner cannot do everything in the backfield. I think there's still one more big centered back that we need uh, that to complement and really solidify the backfield. And we do need some wingers. That we do need some wingers. Um, you know. <sighs> We need some quality wingers. If you think about it, we do so well in the middle and we do so well attack. And laterally, I mean, if we can just complement these guys, if we can just move forward laterally on the wings, I think we're a dangerous team. I think we are an absolute contender for the Western Conference champion. I don't fear Phoenix. I'm not scared of Phoenix one bit. I think San Antonio FC, you know, they're going to surprise some teams. And everybody's worried about Phoenix rising because, yes, let's be honest. These guys have made the Western Conference championships and they've made USL Cup more than anybody else on the Western Conference side. So they're the dominant team. They're the team that needs to get beat. And I don't care what happens, but I think San Antonio FC is, is really the mentality there is to win. They don't want to back off. They really want to look like the team that went that deserved a Western Conference championship. And probably if it wasn't for some... Let's be honest, the officiating was not the best. And okay, the local the official was a local San Antonio guy, but come on, man, you could have done better. I'll be honest with you. I will blast you on that one and I'll take I don't care. The officiating was terrible for that match. And we cannot blame it on the on the ref. That all comes down as to who is going to be the best prepared team out there. Obviously, OC with their substitutions. Marcina never substituted anybody. He He's this type of keep. He's this type of coach that he's just going to stick to his eleven. He's always been that type of player. He's going to stick to his eleven and he's going to move forward. And you know what? Okay, that was a curse. I hope Coach Marcino understands that. Hey, that's great, Coach. I know you believe in your eleven, but man, come on, make some substitutions when it really matters because it came back and it really affected us. I think we could have closed out that match three or four times in regulation if it wasn't. Just that these lads are just looking tired and exhausted and just giving everything. And at the end of the day, you know, we ended up losing the Western Conference Championship because I think lack of substitution mixed in with the pitch, mixed in with the officiating really hurt us. And OC really capitalized on it and really moved forward. Okay, that was last year. We're moving on forward. Looking into the state of San Antonio FC, a lot of folks think that their team is struggling, that the team is looking a little bit weaker than last year just because we lost some key defensive MLS players. They all went back to their prospective MLS teams. And um, But I'll be honest with you, when it comes down to, to style and match and play, I think this team is not rebuilding. I think they're reinforcing, and I think the players that are coming into San Antonio FC understand the gravity of this season. We need to win a championship. That's it. That's the standard. We cannot be rebuilding. We cannot be finding an identity on the pitch. So if I hear any of this identity talk, we have an identity. I think San Antonio FC in 2021 established the identity of this squad and what it is about and what it can do. So we are not looking for an identity. We have an identity. Now we just need to get out there, continue working hard, and have these lads win, 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 and dominate the Western Conference and move forward. Really make a statement to everybody that San Antonio FC can play and, you know, if we get more word about uh, the Lamar Hunt Cup coming back, I really want to see us do great work against the FC Dallas. And if we get to see Austin Bowl, I mean, I'm sorry, Austin, uh, Austin FC um, in a in, in, in I would be more than happy to go to Austin F. I'm sorry, the Q2 Stadium, because that's not Austin FC Stadium. Let's call it properly the Q2 Stadium and cheer for San Antonio FC in the Lamar Hunt 
Cup. But I think this team, um, when it comes down to 2022, January, I think they're doing a good job. I think they finally opened up the pocketbooks. We are getting players that mean something that have stayed for at least three years in this city and are playing and are being built around. So, Coach Marcena, good on you for not just bringing in these lone players and then that's it. We got to rebuild every year. No, 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 no. We're not rebuilding. Um, if you call this another rebuilding year, it's not. That was 2021. Um, 2020, I'm sorry, that was 2020. In 2021, we were. Um, we were, how do I say, we were just uh, hone-tuning the, the bits and the parts of what needs to happen for us to be a successful team. And I think the idea of winning and what needs to happen to win has finally hit the pocketbooks of Spurs Sports Entertainment. They've opened up the pocketbooks, and I honestly believe that 2022 is going to be a great year for San Antonio FC. I'm very confident. I'm hoping for the best and i'm wishing that we do um do incredible work this year and i think the winning mentality is there the chemistry is on the pitch and it's looking like this team is ready for competition right off the gate and let's be honest who's not excited for detroit city fc the debutantes and the usl after winning two back-to-back -back, uh nisa championships in spring and then the youngster Pato Botello and the former SAFC Maxi Rodriguez coming back to play in their own home turf in San Antonio game one of USL. Do not miss out that game. It's going to be beautiful. It's going to be incredible. There's going to be a lot of San Antonio talent on display. So folks, get ready. 2022 for San Antonio FC just begun and it's going to be better than what you've ever seen in the city next segment we're going to be talking about women's soccer in san antonio texas and yes it's a little too soon it's january season normally doesn't start till probably march april may june but we want to start hammering it out early i think it's time to bring awareness to what these uh squads are doing around the city and how the quality of women's how they're trying how san antonio is working hard to put san antonio women's talents at a professional level on the map and trust me it has gone noticed um we've spoken to so many teams um around the uws the npsl um including the uh, uslw as to the growth of women's soccer in san antonio and i'm going to touch base on that i think uh what the corinthians uh, soccer club women's team um is doing and what the athenians are doing um um is incredible work uh, it's much it is something that is it's it is it's beautiful to watch to be honest with you i i uh i remember in 2017 when um the san antonio athenians came onto the map at that time it was an incredible team great collection of local team they're playing in the wpsl women's premier soccer league and uh, that league is you know insane i got to learn so much about women's leagues and about women's sports not just the nwsl which you know let's talk about that a little bit there, it's, there's always some man if it's not money it's players associations if it's coachings it's the harassments it's the money it's them folding leagues this is i think this is our fourth professional league in the history of women's soccer and the women's soccer federation and just this year they just came up with the women's uh, uh women's soccer union making big statements you know saying hey we're not going to stand for this and that is great we need that that we need that in the men's we need that in usl you know we need these usl uh commissions to players commissions to look out for each other because big big comp big Big leagues ain't going to look out for them, that's for sure. They're just going to use them, use them, abuse them, and get done with them and get the money, the bank, and that's it. But that's the that's the scary reality of the world that we live in. So, women's sports is really, truly pushing forward. Um, the women's national team, yeah, you know, the Olympics was, we got a bronze. It was a success. I don't know why everybody's complaining we didn't get a gold. Congratulations, Canada. Are you kidding me? Did you see them play? Incredible. Nobody was going to beat the Canadians. I actually remember talking to my buddy Miguel Padilla, and I said, Padilla, these girls are going to win it. They're going to beat Sweden. And Miguel's like, no, they won't get past Sweden. They won't get past Germany. I said, man, I think they will. 
you know what? Canada came up on top, and it was surprised, but I had no doubt. I mean, these, these, the, the Canadian squads have been learning a lot from, have been working really hard in improving when it comes to the quality of soccer through NWSL, through colleges and universities here in the United States of America, and they're really doing a great job. In the MLS side, Toronto FC, come on now. I mean, not too long ago, Toronto FC was sweeping in the in the Supporter Shields Cup, in the MLS Cup, and CONCACAF Champions Cup. I mean, they're getting championships. And not too long ago, Toronto FC was a, one of the top teams in this side of the world. I don't know why folks are so impressed by the Canadians. It's, been, it's coming. I don't know. But they're here. And now the team to beat on the women's side is the Canadians. And I love that. That's awesome. And I'm happy about that. But women's sports in soccer in the United States has really, really, really um, been pushing for, yes, the equality of the game, for the growth of the game, the equal pay of the game, the care of the players of the game. And it's it's getting there. Um, it's going to be a slow process. we got to be patient. But I think at the end of the day, um, when everything's said and done, there's no denying that these issues need solutions and i think by supporting women's soccer by going to these games by supporting local soccer supporting the w the uws by supporting the wpsl um that's going to show that hey we want quality soccer in our city i say that because i will be honest with you that the teams that have been popping up here in san antonio as a surf blossoms um, I hear rumors of SA Runners women's team coming about. I don't know yet. I will confirm that with you. Um, but the Athenians and Corinthians, that's already five teams in there. And just San Antonio playing at the WPSL UWS level, which are, okay, Division II women's semi-pro. Whatever. They're professional athletes, whether you like it or not. And any moment in time, these players could go NWSL at any time. So they're pro athletes playing at a high quality level, play with some of the best players around the country, around the city, around the state. It's professional women's soccer. San Antonio Athenians obviously is a darling of the city. They've been around since 2017, um, 2018. Took a break and coming back 2019. Obviously, 2020 hit us hard with COVID. Um, 2021, they bounced back in the UWS under new management. Uh, Soccer Central, San Antonio out there really pushing forward in their facilities. And we're going to be doing some work with Soy San Antonio Football at Soccer Central. We're going to be showing you some of those great work that they're doing there in Leon Valley. And they're really pushing for uh, for youth uh, soccer and women's soccer. It's, it's, it's a beautiful thing. If you haven't gone out there, go. Um, we'll be bringing you more information as to their season in UWS. Um, as well as WPSL for the Corinthians, which are the two top teams, in my opinion, in San Antonio, Texas. Both of them doing. I think Corinthians moving forward into the WPSL is really, really going to show the quality of the club. Um, They have some great young talent. Yes, they've had some young ladies move on from there going into the Liga MX Femenil. Jules is one of the great ones, you know, and obviously... Corinthians, Athenians, whoever you want to call them, they, these young ladies, the Campa sisters, have played both with Corinthians and assist. And, um, and I'm and I'm speaking about Marlene and Ana Campa, who have both played for Corinthians and Athenians respectively in their own times. Have are are also playing in Liga MX uh, Femenil in Mexico at a professional Division One level with professional contracts and doing an amazing work representing San Antonio, representing themselves, their family, and the city. I'm in the respective clubs. So with that being said, um, 2022 is going to be a great year for women's soccer. It's going to be one of those things where you're going to be seeing a lot of uh, uh, universities. I think UIW was huge last year going all the way into the Sun Belt Championship. I mean, come on. Um, That was an incredible run. Nobody expected them to even even get that far. They weren't looking good in the beginning. They weren't looking good in the midseason. And then all of a sudden, they just had this hunger to win and surged and just made an incredible run. And they beat out some top teams in the Sun Belt Tournament, going all the way to the championship and just losing just by one goal. Man, it was just an incredible match. It was an incredible match. The young ladies played hard. UIW is going to be coming back in full strength. UTSA Women's did an incredible job in Conference USA. And I will tell you what, uh, we couldn't be 
any prou- prouder of Coach Derek Pittman and his philosophy. It's taken three years, four years almost, to have this team, UTSA, be put on the map, full display, on the road, winning out there, just showing what they could do. Um, I mean, these, these ladies played their hearts out. They played so hard, and they played – with just a passion and a different philosophy and a a different approach to the game that we've seen in previous times that we've reported here at Soy San Antonio Football. So 2022 for these two big teams is going to be big. And look, let's talk about the turnaround for St. Mary's and uh, Our Lady of the Lake, Olu. St. Mary's and Our Lady of the Lake, I mean, man, they turned out those women's programs making playoffs. Um, Incredible. Just both of them making playoffs and just incredible runs. You know, it... Very proud of both of those those squads. And then Trinity University crushing it in their division, just dominating on their end. And if you haven't gone out to go see the Trinity University Tiger ladies, I mean, come on. you got to get out there. At least go out there and support and watch these, these university girls, just a lot of local talent, just play at a high absolute level without fear and really. So 2021 recapping. Um, San Antonio in women's soccer saw a lot of success, beginning with, um, beginning with San Antonio Athenians. They made history by being the first team in Texas to get into the national championships of UWS and going down to uh, the eventual champions of that tournament. That I'll tell you, Santa Clarita, and if you're watching the Santa Clarita, shout out to you. I'm still, man, I'm still <laughs> smiling about your championship game and the game against the San Antonio Athenians, that was, wow, that was next level. You guys got to get on YouTube and look at the UWS championship game from last year, um, which was um, just an incredible match. Santa Clarita, there was nobody going to beat that. But you know what? The 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 San Antonio Athenians, back to our local squad, um, really impressed. I mean, beating Texas Republic to get to the championship, the national championship was insane, you know, uh that was beautiful and there was no turning back these girls last year you know played with a lot of passion played with a lot of passion and tenacity if there's one thing i can two words that i can describe uh san antonio athenians from last year was a very very passionate team a very tenacious team um very strong will-minded young ladies um that were out there on full display just wanting to win and and doing the work and congratulations to them 2022 is going to be a different year. Uh, new management, new technical director. We'll be talking uh, a little bit about that. Leland Hammond takes over as technical director for uh, San Antonio Athenians, and they have a brand new coach. And um, Fabio, we love him. He was a great, you know, great start. I mean, look what he did. Um, but now they're moving forward um, with new management and new coaching. They're going to be, honestly, I think it's going to be a much tougher physical next level team now they know what it takes to win um they're going to be seeking players to get to that next level we'll be bringing you all that information for their open camps um through uh soy saf and through san antonio athenians now as far as the corinthians um they're very um how do i put this they love to just show up train and play um it's one of those low-key teams they they like to stay out of the limelight, but trust me, they do very, very good work. It's the women's squad and their men's squad uh, has really done some good work. Um, I know from uh, the Corinthians, they were out in Florida, and they were they really impressed out there. Um, the Corinthians ladies, they impressed in their play in the tournament, and that was that was eye opening. I was just, I was watching, doing a lot of recaps and watching some of the scores as you know as they were passing me down on Twitter and on the tournaments. Um, uh, it was, it was, it was great to watch and get to see the, the Corinthians now moving forward. They need to make these tournament plays, play outside, and 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 really impress because UWP WPSL. I'm sorry, WPSL is no easy walk in the park. I mean, they're, these these ladies are going to be playing a game on a Saturday and probably turning around playing a game on a Sunday in Houston or in in San Antonio or in Austin. It, 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 WPSL moves quick and their season is fast. I mean. You, it's incredible the endurance that these young ladies have to go through in that league. UWS is a, it's a little bit more spread out. Uh, I like that style of system. Um, you know, it's a weekly, and they're not going to be doing these double headers. I don't think they're going to be. You know, they they like to look, look really look out for the players. But in the WPSL, man, that league, it's intense, and the the quality and the intensity of the matches is just 
it's incredible. You need to check it out. Um, but we'll be bringing you a lot more about these teams. Also to mention, as a surf is going to be in the mix. Um, incredible runs last year as well by SA Surf Women's um, team. Um, no word yet on the Blossoms, but from what I've seen on the WPSL, the Blossoms will be um, participating in WPSL. If there's anything else um, that we hear from that, we will be letting you know. But there's definitely going to be a lot of uh, uh, there's going to be a lot of scouting, a lot of uh, games and potential tryouts that are going to be coming up for all four of these squads that are going to be participating this summer. Uh, late spring in these tournaments but i'm gonna tell you right now when it comes down to women's soccer uh in san antonio um it's it's uh, it's going to be a very very incredible year now now one team that i did not forget about is our, the newest soccer team in san antonio texas and san antonio they're going to be um moving into their second season and they are going to be under the leadership of a brand new coach I'm a very well-respected coach, a state state run championship coach, and uh, and coach uh, Freddie Sanganetti out of uh, Cinco Ranch out there in Katy, Texas. He coached um, the men's um, men's soccer team out there successfully, and I think what Coach Sanganetti is going to bring to San Antonio is going to be that winning mentality I, he's very much aware as to what's going on in the women's soccer spectrum here in san antonio texas we'll be bringing you more on coach Freddy sanganetti um the newest signing in coach robert jaramillo which uh, you've probably read about as southwest texas i'm sorry as southwest as southwest high school dragons head men's coach as he now takes over for texas a m uh, san antonio men's uh, soccer program it'll be his first year but coach freddie sanganetti is taking over the women's program in san antonio and it's going to be incredible i think coach sanganetti is going to bring in something that is going to be special do not count out a crazy run from the texas and san antonio um, jaguars here in san antonio texas they are playing in the naia yes the, that league um, where olu and other teams play um, they will be facing Olu um, down to eventually down the road once these schedules come out for next season um, in the NAIA Red River Conference. So it's going to be a lot of fun to watch uh, Texas and San Antonio women's soccer really grow. Um, not a very successful year for the program on both ends last year uh, for 2021. So there's not much to talk about there. It's just a brand new squad that just started up. But you know what? I think Texas and San Antonio. They said, hey, we, we need winners. We, we just can't have a soccer squad when St. Mary's, Our Lady of the Lake, UIW, um, UTSA, uh, Trinity University are all making national title runs and playoff runs and conference runs. And we're over here like, okay, what's up? I think San Antonio, Texas and San Antonio leadership said we need winners. And I, there's no doubt that Coach Freddie Sanganelli is going to be bringing in that in from Cinco Ranch out of Katy, Texas, a very successful men's soccer program. So, folks, stay tuned. 2022 is going to be an incredible year when it comes down to women's soccer. Thank everyone that was here watching this podcast, our first one for 2022. Lots of information we try to touch. Men's and Women's Texas High School Soccer, San Antonio FC, how they're starting off the year. And women's soccer, very important piece that is really emerging in the city and growing. Stay tuned for more Soy San Antonio football. Follow Soy Saf on all our multimedia platforms, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and even TikTok. Soy Saf underscore TV on YouTube to watch all our content um, as far as soccer features and soccer stories that are coming around San Antonio, Texas. SoySaf.com. San Antonio 6A Soccer on Twitter. Follow these guys. It's incredible. We're getting a lot of uh, a, a lot of information on both men and women. So, folks, it's going to be an incredible year. I'm excited to be bringing back podcasts with you. We'll be having more guests as we move along. But for now, episode one. But for now, episode one. Soy San Antonio football. I'm Benjamin Dosa. We'll be seeing you next week.